Psalms 102 says, Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thy ear unto me in the day when I call, answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as in hearth. My heart is smitten and is withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By the reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I'm like a pelican of the wilderness. I'm like an owl of the desert. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Mine enemies reproach me all the day. And they that are mad against me are sworn against me. For I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping. Because of thine indignation and thy wrath, for thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. My days are like a shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass. But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time has come. For thy servants take pleasure in her her stones, and favor the dust thereof. And so the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth and thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. For he hath looked down from the height of the sanctuary from heaven did the Lord behold the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to death, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord, he weakened my strength in the way, he shortened my days. I said, O oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old thou hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou, thou shalt endure. Yea, all them shall wax old like a garment, as a vesture and shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. The children of thy servants shall continue and their seed shall be established before thee. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the good singing. Lord, thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for helping us this past week and all that you've done. Lord, I meant what I said this morning. I can't even wrap my head around all that you've done. But Lord, I want to thank you for what we uh, experienced, both seen and unseen. And God, I want to thank you in advance for what you're going to do next week. I believe Brother Phil's right. I believe you're going to do something big. And Lord, I'm longing for you to do something big. Um, but between now and then, we've got a lot of time. And Lord, I realize uh, the sorry no good devil will stop at nothing to discourage your people. So help us tonight build a foundation in, in our lives and put a hedge about our hearts that, Lord, we might... Uh, keep our eyes upon you that we might keep paying the price and offering up the sacrifice that it takes to please you that God when the next week comes it will be greater than the first week Lord uh, Haggai said that the latter house would be of greater glory than the former physically the second temple was not near as beautiful as Solomon's temple but it had more God on it and so, God, we pray we'd have more God next week than we had last week. Now, Father, bless your people. Help us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. In verses 1 and 2, we find the psalmist is destitute. He is crying, not and rejoicing upon the Lord. He's crying 
because he is destitute. You see, when you read the prophets, you read that Jeremiah prophesied that if they didn't repent, that nations would come and overthrow them. And when you see the minor prophets and all the prophets that prophesied rising up, uh, God sent them prophets uh, who preached to them to repent and turn. Uh, but uh, Israel continued after uh, their own wicked ways and serving false gods and they ignored the prophets and ignored the men of God uh, and God sent destruction on Israel and they were carried away in captivity to Babylon for 70 years. This psalm was written in Babylon. They went from being God's chosen people to now being servants in a strange land. They're destitute. They're dry. They have no hope. We see the psalmist is destitute. In verses 3 through 11, we see that he's in despair. He is so miserable he forgets to eat. He can see his bones through his skin. He, like others, have found ashes to be their bread. Ashes always being a sign of mourning. Weeping and mourning and sackcloth and ashes. He's destitute. He's in despair. Boy, did you hear the testimonies of Brother J.D. and Brother Bobby last week? About how dry it is in their areas. How destitute it is. Huh? Brother Greg said this morning when he's preaching, Miss Sidney said that he talked about he wanted to come up here to be a blessing, but all he got was a blessing. Uh, and how much help he got just being in the presence of an environment where it wasn't dry and destitute. We see the destitution. We see the disparagement. But even in that, this psalmist finds reason to delight. Look, if you will, in verse 12. He says, But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. It doesn't matter what your situation, if you can get your eyes on the Lord, you can find something to delight in. Yes, sir. Verse 13, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. He, he saw that there was going to be a time when Jerusalem would get rebuilt uh, and Israel would get to go back to her homeland. Uh, uh, friend, uh, uh, there's a lot of despair in our world, a lot of wickedness in our world, uh, but we can see what God did around here this week uh, and we can take hope and we can take refuge. Uh, God's still on the throne. He's still doing a work. Uh, Look at verse 15. He says the same. He says this. Uh, 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 the, uh, so the heathen shall fear, thy, fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. Uh, when the Lord shall build up Zion, uh, he shall appear in his glory. Uh, and then he closes out the, this psalm, verse 25. Of old thou hast laid the foundation of the earth, uh, and the heavens are the work of thine hands. Uh, they shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all them shall wax old like a garment. Uh, as a vesture shalt uh, thou change them and they shall be changed uh, you do know there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth uh, hey the psalmist uh, uh, not even having prophecy knew that uh, he said those things are going to burn out uh, but you uh, and shall endure forever look in verse 28 uh, uh, the children of thy servants shall continue uh, and their seed shall be established before thee uh, he even found hope in his hopelessness but I'm not going to preach on any of that stuff. I'm interested in verses 6 and 7. I was reading the Word of God last week, and I'm just reading, and I got down here verse 6 and 7, and these are some odd verses. And they just kind of spoke to me. I guess I'm kind of odd. But they spoke to me. Verse 6 says, I am like a pelican of the wilderness... I'm like an owl of the desert. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. When I read that, I read that pelican of the wilderness. Now, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Don't say amen to that, Aubrey. But I'm not the smartest guy in the world. 
I've seen a lot of pelicans. You're probably going to see some later this week. I've seen a lot of pelicans. They're an odd-looking bird. But if you've ever uh, uh, been around the ocean or seashore, you'll see some. Uh, uh, or if you've ever watched uh, Wild Kingdom, you might see some. Uh, it's uh, Really, it, it, it doesn't even look like it's flying. It looks like it's floating. That bird just it never, you never, hardly ever see it flap its wings. Uh, it's just very graceful. Uh, and it'll float over to the sea, and all of a sudden, man, it'll make a nosedive for the sea. Uh, it'll go down, swallow up a fish uh, 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 in that big uh, uh, beak of his, and then it gets this thing like... Like me an extra chin underneath it that holds the fish uh, and then it swallows it up and goes on down the road uh, but can I say pelicans are made for the seashore yes, amen. but the Bible said a pelican of the wilderness a pelican can't dive into the dirt in the wilderness and get a fish that's odd and then it talks about an owl of the desert now, I, I wasn't raised in the desert like you, Grandma. Huh? I'm not saying you're prickly or nothing, but, you know, I, I wasn't raised there. But I see owls in the wilderness. I see owls in the forest. I see owls in a barn. But I don't know that owls are made to be sustained in the environment of a desert. It's just kind of odd. And then we see the sparrow on the housetop. Sparrows are supposed to be in trees, not the housetop. So I saw this, and I, I just want to preach for just a little bit on a bird out of place. You do know in your King James Bible many times believers are referred to as eagles. Yep. Amen. And you do know eagles have special traits. Do you know that an eagle will not eat a carcass? Yep. It always eats fresh meat. Yep. Right. Can I say God's people are not to be feasting after the dead things of the world? Uh, right. We're to come and sit under the table of God and eat of the freshness of God's hand. Uh, uh, you do realize that eagles uh, are majestic when they soar. Uh, and can I say there's nothing more glorious in this world uh, than when somebody gets born again uh, and they really start living. Are you hearing me? Uh, and they just uh, 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 have something about them. that are, They just become the envy of everybody else. Uh, uh, can I say uh, uh, eagles uh, have an extra set of eyelids. Uh, you see, uh, uh, when a, a predator gets on an eagle uh, uh, like like a falcon and tries to take down an eagle. Uh, hey, that eagle knows all it has to do is head straight for the sun. Uh, and when it's headed straight for the sun, that extra eyelid comes down. Uh, and the brightness of the sun is shielded. Uh, and the prey, uh, when following the eagle, can't uh, find the eagle because of the sun. Uh, and you and I as God's youngins, uh, when the hounds of hell get on our tail, uh, all we got to do is head for the sun. Uh, hey, they get one glimpse of him, they lose all sight of us. Uh, hey, what a blessing. Uh, another great attribute of eagles uh, is eagles. Uh, uh, there's just something about them. Uh, just about every eagle in its lifetime goes through a molting period. Now you got to understand, Brother Brian, eagles always build their nest on a rock or a high place. Uh, I'm glad we're built on the rock. Uh, but eagles will go through a molting period uh, where they'll get down off their rock and they'll get down on the ground and they begin to pull and pluck their feathers out and they begin to go through a molting period. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, uh, some of you were going through a molting period until last week. Uh, 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 you just didn't resemble yourself anymore. Uh, uh, but other eagles know uh, when, uh, uh, when an eagle's down on the ground going through that molting period, uh, he's prime candidate for prey. Uh, a fox or a wolf uh, or anything can uh, attack that eagle and take that eagle out. Uh, so other eagles, uh, hallelujah, get around it, get to flying around it, uh, get to calling for it, uh, be an encouragement to it, uh, get that eagle off the ground, uh, get him back to his rock. Uh, I saw some of that last week. Uh, folks were rallying around some uh, and we're calling to some, uh, we're encouraging some, uh, getting them back to the rock. And what a blessing. But even 
and God's youngins can get out of place. Mm. There are three birds here that are out of place. And I promise you in the next week, the devil's going to try and knock you out of place. Can I say this? First of all, this pelican is despondent. He's so out of place. He's in the he's he's out there in the wilderness. He isn't going to find any fish in the wilderness. He is despondent. He is so far from being a pelican, he don't even know what he is anymore. Can I say if you're not careful, the devil will turn you all around, turn you upside down, tear you inside out. He'll get you doubting everything there is to God. And if you're not careful, you'll get to look around seeing everybody else getting a hold of God, and you'll get despondent. I promise you, the devil will get you doubting whether or not you're saved. The devil will get you doubting whether or not God's real. The devil will get you doubting whether or not God hears your prayers. Do you know what the word pelican means in the ancient Hebrew language? It means bitter. And a pelican in the wilderness is bitter. You know what the devil tried to do to some of you this week? Try to make you bitter. He gets you upset. You say, oh, God answered their prayers. Their kids got saved. Their grandkids got saved. How come mine didn't? Hmm? That's the kind of thoughts the devil put in your head. Hmm? Brother Thad, it's the devil tries to make you feel that you're worthless. Yep. Jesus don't. He gave, he gave the best of heaven for you. Sure ah! You see, the devil, he wants to make you despondent. See, when you're bitter, you can't respond in the things of God. You're despondent. You can't do anything but sit there and fester. Can I say this morning there were some folks showed up that hadn't been here all week last week. Now let me just say they could have. Now there were some who couldn't be here last week. But there were some that showed up this morning that could have been. That weren't. They looked real despondent this morning. Amen. Can I say this? I didn't see a one of them worship. If you couldn't worship after this morning service. I mean God was in the choir. God must have been in Sunday school. When I come out from my Sunday school class, folks were in the altar. Then God was in the choir. Then God was in the special singing. Huh? And I don't know if you enjoyed it or not, but I was sure enjoyed doing the preaching. If you couldn't have worshipped around here this morning. I mean, when, when Brother Ray called on Tommy to pray, Tommy got to where he couldn't even pray. He got to think about how big God was. If you couldn't worship this morning. You was just despondent. Sure. I mean, even during the handshake. I had people come up, hug my neck, talk about how great God was, what a great week we had. And there was just some sitting here like bullfrogs not having a burp. You know what I'm saying? Pelican is despondent. The devil wants to make you despondent this week. That owl in the desert, he's dry. Huh? Let's think about them bones in the Ezekiel. He said, and lo, they were very dry. Uh, I want to tell you what COVID did is it made a lot of Christians dry. Rather than getting in their prayer closets and rather than spending that extra time they had on their hands with God they went the opposite direction they got really really dry hmm? there are Christians that are so dry if they used to well up a tear it cracked their face when it hit it I'm talking dry I saw the news last night. I don't watch the news much, but I saw the news last night, and they said the month of June we've had less than a quarter inch of rain. You walk on the ground, the grass cracks under your feet. Just crimp, crackles. I didn't even mow the grass this week. 
Say, what? It's too dry. You kill it. There's Christians that way. It's so dry because they've not had no moisture. The water we talked about last week, they hadn't been in it. They're dry. Then we get down to that sparrow. That sparrow's depressed. Look with me in verse number 7. The psalmist says, I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Can I say this sparrow is depressed? First of all, he's searching. He said, I watch. Can I help you? When you get depressed, the devil's got a great set of binoculars he puts on your eyes to where you get to looking around at people that aren't depressed. And you get to looking at their blessings, and you get to looking at all they got, and it just makes you feel lower and lower and lower. Amen. He said, I watch, and I'm as a sparrow on the housetop. Yeah. Hmm. He's depressed. He's searching. The good news is the Bible says, Seek and ye shall find. But you're not going to find God looking at people. You're going to find God when you look to Him, the author and finisher of our faith. But He's not only searching. Notice this sparrow is solo. Look what He said in verse 7. I watch and am as a sparrow. What's that word? Alone. Can I say it is always a tactic of the devil to isolate sheep. Do you know why the Lord commanded us to assemble together now all the world will say because there's strength in numbers no it's more than that it's because we need one another just like Miss Lynn said about the live stream and yes you can see God's doing something and some people can even feel things in a live stream I can listen to a live recording of somebody singing and folks shouting in the background and I get a little shout in me too uh, but there's nothing like being there when the shouting's going on are you listening uh, uh, and there's just something about when we come out from among the world uh, and we assemble together uh, and we start hearing the saints of God testify about the goodness of God uh, folks get to singing about how good Jesus is uh, and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost walks through uh, it'll help you and sustain you uh, but when the devil gets a sheep isolated from the flock he's prime candidate for the wolf you'll rarely ever find a wolf attack a flock of sheep but he'll always attack a single sheep huh What's the old adage? An idle mind's the devil's workshop. If he can get you alone and start whispering venom in your ear, after a while you'll start believing it. Even Samson got vexed. It took three times uh, of Delilah, Delilah fooling him, saying, hey, the Philistines are upon you, and he jumped up ready to whip them and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, uh, he finally got wore down, and he told her the secret of his strength. Sorry, no good devil. He'll just keep coming at you, keep coming at you, keep coming at you, keep putting thoughts in your mind, keep weighing on you, keep wearing you down till he gets you alone. And then he'll pounce on you. He's depressed. He's searching. He's alone. But he's stunned. He's out of sort. He's out of place. Look what he says. I'm as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Sparrow don't belong on the housetop. He belongs in a tree. Why is he on a housetop? He don't even know where he's at. If you're, not, if you're not careful, the devil will turn you around so much you don't even know where you're at. Amen. There are people after people after people that enter into fundamental Baptist churches every week here preaching, but they've been so turned around by the devil they don't even know they need God. They're so cold and indifferent to God they think they're increased with goods and have need of nothing. One of the greatest lies of the devil is because you have a house over your, uh, uh, that you live in, you've got a nice car, you've got food on your table, you're blessed to God, that's all you need. Can I help you something? You need God. Amen. Regardless if you've got a house or not, you need God. Yep. Regardless if you've got food or not, you need God. You need Him more than your next breath, my dear friends. Amen. And so many people come in, sit down on God in a pew and think they're okay and they don't even realize how far they are away from God. And the devil sits back and he cackles all along because when he's got you in that place, you cannot impact somebody else who's lost without God. The sparrow's depressed. 
I got to thinking about depression. It's a real thing. I know Baptist preachers don't believe it's a real thing. Depression's real. Now listen, don't mistake me. There's one thing to get the blues. It's another thing to be clinically depressed. If you're clinically depressed, you need some great help. If you're in the blues, you need some help. But if you're clinically depressed, you need to see a professional. You need some great help because when you're in that state, you, you can get to the point where you'll take your own life. It is a real thing. Now, I know a lot of Baptist preachers, they'll, they'll talk about how great God is and that if you're saved, you'll never do anything crazy like that. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You can get out of the will of God sitting in a church pew, and there's no telling what you'll do. The Bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked, and no man knoweth it. You yourself don't know what you're capable of doing in a weak moment. I got to think about depression. Can I say something about depression? It's brought on through indictment. Guilt. You get to thinking about how you've disappointed the, the Lord or how you've uh, failed the grace of God or how you've stepped in a mud puddle. Even though you got your foot off and you got it cleaned off and you got it washed in the blood, you, you, you don't dwell on the forgiveness. You don't dwell on God uh, uh, doing the work of grace in your life. You dwell on the failure. And you'll get to thinking about how sorry you know you are and how low down you are and how could God be so good to you and you fail Him so much uh, and how uh, uh, ridiculous you are in the eyes of God and how you're nothing and you don't deserve God's grace. And you'll let that guilt depress you. Just go read Romans chapter 8 verse number 1. There is now therefore no condemnation to them that walk after the Spirit. Are you listening? When Jesus forgives you, there is no more condemnation. God's not the one who makes you guilty. It's that sorry, no good devil. And then you giving an ear to him and you listening to him and you talk yourself into it. It's an indictment. You're indicting yourself. Telling yourself you are worthless. God never told you that. He has loved you with an everlasting love. Mm. I like what Big Doug said a couple of weeks. We're unworthy, but we're not worthless. So if somebody's telling you you're worthless, they're, they're either the devil or a demon. Are you listening? God never tell you that. He bankrupt heaven for you. But you'll get to feeling so guilty. Now listen, when the Holy Ghost makes you, when He convicts you, He convicts you in love. And He shows you the error of your ways. But he doesn't perpetually tell you how sorry you are after you've gotten forgiveness. Mm -mm. You know what the Holy Ghost does after you get forgiveness? It gives you peace. Amen. Indictment is how depression is brought on. It's brought on by insecurity. Insecurity. Insecurity can be brought about through sadness, through emptiness, through a lack of confidence. Can I help you with something? We should never take confidence in our flesh and our abilities, but we should always take confidence in the Lord. Amen. The very definition of humility is to know your strengths and your weaknesses and abide therein. Because when you realize your strengths and your weaknesses, you realize how great God is Amen. and what He's able to do for you. And can I say this? Insecurity is also brought on by hopelessness. A child of God should never feel hopeless. Because we have a blessed hope. The trumpet could sound even right now. We could be out of here. But that insecurity, that indictment of guilt will depress you. It amazes me that in a congregation of believers, when folks can be shouting and singing and having a wonderful time, the devil's working overtime on people telling some folks, even in a congregation, you can't shout because you're worthless. You'll never be as good as that person. That's why you've got to sit over here and be miserable. Hmm? Well, I want everybody right now to look around. They're in a halo in this building. The devil's a liar and he's the father of it. 
And some of you, some point this week, need to get on your knees and get some help from the Lord. And then you need to open up the door and tell the devil to get out. He ain't welcome in your house no more. The Bible says to resist the devil, he'll flee from you. But if you get ear to him, he'll move in. I thought about this. Depression's brought on through insomnia. Folks that can't sleep usually end up depressed. Can I say, you can have a spiritual restlessness that will cause you to get depressed. The Bible says in Hebrews 4, 9, that there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. And when you're feeling guilty and when you're feeling insecure and you're feeling lower than a snake's belly and you're feeling like a pelican in the wilderness or an owl in the desert, guess what? You can't rest. You don't have peace. But there is a peace that remains for you. And it's found in the blood of Jesus Christ. Sure. Then I thought about this. Depression is always brought on, I've alluded to it several times already, through isolation. People stay home, not come to church, say, well, I don't want to hinder the service. Hogwash, you're depressed. I want to tell you something. The devil tried all he can last week to fight this thing, and I'm sure he was here every service, but you'd never know because even the devil couldn't disrupt how good God was last week. And if he couldn't disrupt it, you're not going to hinder it. But see, that's how the devil will tell you, well, I don't want to hinder this service. i got news for you. You ain't that important. The Holy Ghost is going to do what the Holy Ghost wants to do. Uh, now we can grieve him and we can quench him but when he gets to rolling like a river like he was in here there ain't nobody going to stop the river uh, but see that's just another tactic of the devil trying to keep you at home if you got to crawl I wouldn't miss church because what you need is going to be found here I got to thinking about this sparrow this sparrow is on the housetop searching alone hmm? he's depressed can I help you with something a sparrow is a songbird hmm? some of you know where I'm going with this hmm? uh, see God when he birthed you in the family of God he put some things in you you are not of the rudiments of this world anymore. You are of a royal priesthood. You are of a chosen generation. Uh, you don't belong on the housetop being alone, uh, uh, searching. Uh, you belong and you need to be doing what God birthed you again to do. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, uh, a sparrow should have been, a uh, songbird should have been singing. Uh, let me help you something. Just keep singing. Uh, uh, it don't matter if you're despondent. Uh, doesn't matter if you're depressed. It uh, uh, doesn't matter if you're destitute. Uh, doesn't matter if you dry, uh, just keep on singing. Uh, when God saved you, put a new song in your mouth. Uh, uh, Isaiah 61 3, God has given us a garment of praise uh, for the spirit of heaviness. Uh, you know what will cause the depression to flee. Uh, you know what will cause the dryness to go away. Uh, you know what will cause the destitution to turn into fruition. Uh, a good song. Uh, every now and then, a good, oh, how I love Jesus. Uh, it'll help you. Uh, every now and then uh, he keeps me singing uh, he'll help you uh, every now and then uh, I just look into him and sing an amazing grace how sweet the sound uh, it'll help you uh, get you a good godly song uh, and just sing it uh, just sing it uh, just keep on uh, singing uh, as the blues will go away uh, Jesus will get bigger than your problems uh, and you'll find help in time of need uh, just keep on singing. Uh, just keep on seeking. Uh, he said he was watching. Uh, you just got to keep on seeking. Uh, keep seeking the Lord. Seeking you shall find. Uh, keep seeking the scriptures. Uh, keep seeking the Savior. Uh, keep seeking showers of blessing. Uh, friend, he won't let you down. Just keep on seeking. Uh, got to thinking about this. Keep on serving. Uh, last thing you do is quit doing what God wants you to do. Uh, just keep serving. Uh, just be what God intended you to be. Uh, don't be an owl in the desert. Uh, don't be a pelican in the wilderness. Uh, 
Don't be a sparrow alone on the housetop. Uh, be a child of God. Uh, be faithful. Uh, hey, even when uh, the world says you can't, uh, what God's put in you, you can. Uh, just be faithful. Uh, be holy. Uh, be right with God. Just be. Be what He created you to do. Huh? Thought about this. Just keep sowing. Just keep sowing the Word. Keep telling others about Jesus. You know what? Get the focus off of you. Start telling others about Jesus. Just keep sowing the Word. Uh, just keep sowing warmth and kindness. Uh, just be good to people. Uh, just show them the kindness of God. Uh, just keep sowing uh, uh, the wealth of God and what God's done for you. Just tell others how good Jesus is. It'll help you. Uh, just keep sowing. Keep serving. Keep seeking. Keep singing. Just keep shining. Now listen, I'm not telling you to fake it till you make it. If you're hurting, get along with God and let God do a work. Let Him apply that balm of Gilead to your soul. But oh, He's touched a lot of you in this last week. Now it's time to shine. Go out there and shine. There's a lot of folks out there. Might be like that pelican or that owl or that sparrow. They might know the Lord, but oh, their soul is miserable. Uh, just keep shining. Uh, just let them know. Uh, hey, God's well able to deliver you. Just shine before sinners. Let them show uh, there's something greater than COVID. Uh, let them know that Jesus said all lives matter. Taste the death for every man. Huh? Let them know there is a cause worth standing for, and His name's Jesus. I'm getting the gospel out, huh? Just keep shining. Just keep shouting. Hmm. Hey, when the enemies of Israel would gather around them, and Israel would bring that ark out, and they'd shout, their enemies knew the shout of a king amongst them. And, oh, I promise you, God keeps a blessing around here. There's going to be some folks that don't like it. But you know what they can't deny is the shout of a king. Uh, Brother Bobby preached on them lions the other day and how a roar of a lion can cause some of his prey to be almost scared totally to death. Huh? Do you know that roar of the lion? That's why he's the king of the jungle, because of his roar. And we do know to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, seeketh whom he may devour. He's a roaring lion. He, his bark's a whole lot worse than his bite, by the way. But you and I need to have the shout of glory in our soul because that'll bring conviction when other things won't be conviction. That'll stay the enemy when other things won't stay the enemy. And I thought about this. Just keep soaring. Some of you took flight this week. It's all over you. Just throw them wings out there. Let the wind of the Holy Ghost keep coming up underneath you and just keep soaring. Just keep soaring. You know, you never notice a bird in the trees, but you notice when they're flying overhead. Hmm? Is there anything more majestic than an eagle soaring over a mountain scene? Is there anything more majestic than a Christian soaring under the blessings of God? Just keep soaring. Keep soaring. I promise you the devil's going to try and get you out of place this week. And if you let him, he will. But I remind you, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. You know the best way to combat what Slewfoot's going to try to do this week? Stay in the Word. Stay on your knees. Keep a song. Keep soaring. Don't let the devil bring you down. Every time he gets on your back, you ought to get on your knees and say, Lord, he's bothering me again. Would you please help me? Help will come from the glory world. Huh? Just keep, hey, I can tell. When folks got that charge to give the Lord an hour a day, I can tell a difference around here. Why don't you try this week, give him an hour and a half. You know what? There have been two times, and I'm not bragging on me because I didn't mention it when I was doing it, but there's been two times in the last month I spent some time fasting. Hmm? I got some direction from the Lord. It wouldn't hurt some of you to fast a little bit this week. You don't have to announce it. don't have to let people know. Some of you need fast. Now listen, fasting is more than giving up something. 
Fasting is becoming so enthralled with the Lord, you don't take time to do those things. Some of you need to fast from your social media. Some of you need to fast from some food, maybe. Some of you need to fast from uh, uh, some of your activities. Just something that takes some of your time that sometimes the devil might use some of those very innocent tools and jack you up. But if you spend that time in prayer and spend that time with God, he can't jack you up. But the Lord can lift you up. Uh, we're getting ready to go in another meeting. And the prophet Dr. Phil said it's going to be big. You know how, what will make it get big? When we get low. The lower and smaller we get, the bigger God gets. Are you listening? So maybe we just uh, this week need to give God a little bit more time. Just spend a little more time in prayer. A little bit more time seeking His face. A little bit more time in the Scriptures. A little bit more time just meditating on Him. A little bit more time talking with Him. A little bit more time walking with Him. Huh? Hey, it's nothing better than you just walking with Jesus. Say, preacher, i got to work. I know that. You can do your job, still have your mind on the Lord. Hmm? Huh? This week, look for the Lord to open the door. When the Lord opens the door, walk through it. Maybe it's going to be talking to somebody you would have never talked to. Maybe it's to give a track to somebody you'd have never gave a track to. Maybe it's a door for you to pray for somebody you would have never prayed for. Just if He opens the door, walk through it. Just mind the Lord this week. No telling what God's going to do. But I promise you one thing. If you mind the Lord and you get your mind on the Lord and you be faithful to the Lord, guess who won't affect you and depress you and make you all distraught and all jacked up the sorry no good devil? Well, don't give place to him. Again, draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Hmm? Listen, you can tell by the way I'm built, I was never a wrestler. We have anybody in there wrestled in high school or college? Anybody? I didn't think so. Uh, them wrestlers that's a whole different breed they aren't right them guys are messed up now back when I played basketball in high school we had to share brother Bob our locker room with the wrestlers them guys aren't right them guys in order to wrestle at a lower weight class and yet be bigger and stronger they would run all week long and, and, and they'd sweat out all the impurities of their body and they would just drink water and run and get down their, their body weight so they could wrestle at a, at a lower weight class. And when they did all that running and all that sweating and all that wrestling on them mats and then they folded them mats up and put it in our nice pristine basketball locker room, it stunk to high heavens. <laughs> them guys were a mess. But one thing I learned about wrestlers... They said that the human body suffers pain. But if you can endure for six minutes, the pain goes away. Six minutes, the pain goes away. No matter what hold you're in, no matter how much intense pain you're in, if you can hold out for six minutes, the pain goes away. Well, I got to quake that back when I used to run cross country. I used to run that. And there's something about running up down mountains and hills and around valleys and through rivers and steeple chasing and all that stuff. I don't care who you are. After, at a certain point, you get this pain in your side that you think you're giving birth and you can't because you're a man. <laughs> but Brother Bob, if you quit running, the pain don't go away. But if you keep running, the pain goes away. If you can break through the wall, the pain goes away. Them wrestlers told me, if we can hold out for six minutes, the pain goes away. Now, I said all that to say this. The devil's going to try and inflict pain on you. But if you just hang in there with Jesus, the pain will go away. Amen. And victory will come. Amen. You will overcome. Oh, he, he'll throw everything he's got at you. Just resist him. There comes a point he'll flee. Because he knows he can't break what's on inside of you. The only one that can suppress really what is inside of you, what God's put in you, is you. And he'll do everything he can to get you to give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Look up. Look up. 
I'll look unto the hills from which cometh my help. Look up, and you'll overcome that sorry no good devil as well. Maybe tonight you just feel dry. Maybe tonight you just feel out of place. Maybe tonight you've come here and folks got help all week, but you really didn't get help. Maybe tonight you're one of them, you know the devil knows how to get on your back, and you're already fearful that this week he's going to show up. I got good news for you. The altar's open. You can get some help tonight that'll help you not only tonight, but in the days to come. Why don't you look unto the hills, unto the hills of glory, to the Lord Jesus, and get some help tonight. Why do you think, Jude said, building yourself up on your most holy faith? So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Some of you just need to come to Jesus and say, Lord, make the truths that were preached tonight evident in my heart so that when Slewfoot shows up, I'll be able to overcome. Some of you need some help tonight. Maybe some of you still haven't been revived. You need some revival tonight. Maybe some of you need some strength from the glory world. Maybe some of you are in a little state of depression and you need the Lord to deliver you. I've got good news. He is the great physician and he is able to deliver you. Folks are coming. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. While they're coming, let's all stand. You mind the Lord, let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, we had no idea how you was going to take this message, but Lord, it's a needful message. Help us, Lord, to hide the word of God in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. God, put a hedge about our minds this week. Lord, help us to focus on the Lord. Help us, Lord, to yield ourselves even more to him. God, do a work in our hearts and our lives even this night that will propel us over the tactics of the devil. Paul said we're not ignorance of, uh, ignorant of his devices. Uh, we know that he's going to come. We know that he's going to try and uh, uh, disrupt what's going on. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God, we're leaning on thine understanding. Uh, we're trusting in you. Uh, now, Father, help those uh, that are suffering some of these things even tonight. Uh, grant victory to some tonight. Uh, Lord, touch some tonight. Uh, get glory in your church tonight. We'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.